talking with our legal correspondent. For quite some time, the issue of gay marriage has been the topic of discussion nationwide as well as internationally. A few weeks ago, the state of New York voted after many protests and debates to legalize same-sex marriage. Here now to join us about the discussion is our legal correspondent, David Lesh. And uh, David, as we know, New York, the sixth uh, largest state, uh, sixth state, I should say, to do it, uh, one of the largest ones to actually do it, and yet and still... Uh, while the, the bill is, is passed and the governor signed it, still a lot of questions. A lot of questions. You know, we did a, we did a show uh, on same-sex marriage on Today's Verdict, which was running this week, and we had a very interesting guest, Harold Price Ferringer. He is a constitutional lawyer. He's argued over 25 cases before the United States Supreme Court. He's well-known, um, and he was terrific. He came on the show, and he, we talked a little bit about the pros and cons of the debate to begin with, and then the ultimately the, you know, the... Um, uh, the same-sex marriage law that did pass. Um, but before we did, we actually talked a little bit of the history. And, and, and that, that was the most fascinating thing, the history of the, uh, of the gay movement and how in the 1960s you, you, know, you, you ended up uh, with the Stonewall Riots and the fact that that kind of pushed the gays into the forefront. You're into the 1970s at this point. There were, there were still you know, a push for rights, but it was more of a, on an individual basis. The group itself was not really looking... Um, to, to, to form any kind of unions, to have any, any, any uh, rights with respect to marriage. They just wanted to be known as a group, mm -hmm. which they did in the 70s. Then you hit the 80s, they took a step backward with the, with the AIDS epidemic. I think society was, was punishing the gay um, uh, and lesbian community for, for a little while. And then finally, when you got into the 90s, the, the push for the same-sex marriage laws began. And they started really in Hawaii, of all places, um, and then what Hawaii did, even though um, there was a push to have the law uh, created for same-sex in, in, I think it was 1996, Hawaii became the first state to ban same-sex marriage through a constitutional amendment. And now we have 30 states that still ban it through the constitutional amendments. Because mm -hmm. remember, each state has its own constitution. Right. And you can put forth an amendment to ban it. Which is why New York was able to get this law passed too because they have their own constitution. Well, we have a, we, we have a constitution too and then, then once we ended up into the into the uh, 2000 and above that's when uh, some of the other states were also trying to do these types of things as well and then finally you had Vermont that said okay in 1999 let's do civil unions as opposed to um, marriage. That lasted until the Massachusetts said no 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 we don't have to do civil unions let's actually legalize marriage and Massachusetts was the first state to actually do that. Um, a few other states followed. Eventually, I think it was by 2003, um, the Supreme Court struck down all sodomy laws. Um, so, so, and in the in his dissent, Judge Scalia said that that this is probably going to lead to same-sex marriage laws. Not that he was so happy about that, and he was right. And that was back in 2003. Fast forward now to 2011, and New York finally. Um, puts forth the same-sex marriage law in the end of June. It was, it was fairly close, but the interesting thing is, even though there were less Democrats now, they were able to get it. I'm sorry, there were, there were more Democrats now than there were um, before they were able to get it passed. And I think it was, it was, it was because some Republicans also switched sides, mm -hmm. which was nice. And it, which it was a, it's been a big debate. And I think, you know, what, what I was discussing on the show, um, what I think is an interesting thing for, for your viewers is to understand is that even though it's been passed, there are still um, a tremendous amount of unknowns that are out there. And I'll right. give you a few. Okay. The, the first one is, is same-sex divorce now. I mean, that, that's, a, that's a big one because you know some of these marriages are going to fall apart, just like any marriage falls apart. The question is, how do you get divorced? Well... In New York, you do not need a residency requirement to get married. In other words, you just come to New York, you don't have to live here, get married in New York. Right. But to get divorced in New York, you need to live here for 90 days. So what do you do if you're a gay couple and you get married and now you want to get divorced, but you're living in, an, in, in, in Texas or someplace else that does not recognize gay marriage? Mm -hmm. Well, does that mean you have to come to New York as a couple and live here? for three months before you're able to file for divorce? Nobody knows, because it's never happened. Right. Now, property. How, how do you distri distri distribute the, 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 distribution the assets? Property. Well, right. you think it would be equitable distribution the way it would be in any marriage, but, but hold on a second. Some of these civil unions, some of these people have been, have been together for 15, 20, 30 years, 
and they've been sharing property. And it, but it's been in only one person's name. So when you see these cases come down the line, and if, when, the, when these cases come down the line, they're going to be, you know, they're going to be setting a precedent. That's right, because we, we don't know what the answers are here. Because somebody might say, hey, look, you know, we were living together for 30 years. Th yes, the, the, the house was in my, in, in, in my spouse's name all that, all, the all that time, but we weren't married because we couldn't get married. But it was really both our houses. Are you telling me now that that's premarital property and I, and I can't split that if we get divorced? Right. Well, you can't. You know, so that's an issue. And how about this one? This is, a, this is another issue. Think about this. You, you, you get married in New York, a gay couple, but now you go to Texas and they don't recognize gay marriage. And one of the, one of the union says, you know what, I think I'll marry a, I'm going to get married to a woman now. Well, can you do that? Well, Texas would say sure because we never thought you were married to begin with. Mm. So yet in New York you're married to a man and now in Texas, you can get married to a woman at the same time. And these are all issues that, that no one's really thought of because they haven't come before the courts yet. Will Texas give New York's law full faith and credit, it's called? In other words, acknowledge right. the fact that they are married in New York? Right now, Texas would not do that. So th these are all very interesting issues that are, uh, that are going to come about. But, the, you know, the debate is still there. There are still many states that are still debating the issue to begin with. Um, pro gay marriages, psychologically, you know, it's important for, for a couple to get married. Psychologically, people who are married live longer. Um, uh, they, they have less stress levels, assuming they're in a good marriage, which, you know, which, mm -hmm. is, which is a big assumption. Then, um, financially, it's a big windfall for the states that have gay marriage. Marriage licenses bring in revenue. Weddings bring in revenue. Photography, everything coming with a wedding, getting married brings revenue. Come into New York to get married, they stay in New York and they stay married here. That's a big windfall. A lot of other states are trying to catch up on that. But financially, let's look at the downside. You know, there's marriage exemptions on your tax form. Does that mean that there's not going to be as much money paid into the IRS? Whereas if they were not married, they'd have to pay that money. Right. Or, you know, other, uh, so, uh, other Social Security benefits. Can you get that now because you're married? Right. Talk to us about the appeal process because we do understand there was there is the possibility of an appeal and and we know that those who are uh, against have filed. Well, they try and get into the court system now. In other words, that 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 the law is unconstitutional. Remember, we have three branches of government. That's the way it always works. We have the legislature, we have the executive, and we have the judiciary. Executive is in New York. Let's let's simplify it for New York. Executive is the governor. The judiciary is the court of appeals, and the legislature is the New York State Assembly. Um, uh, up, upstate, state, the Senate, and the Assembly, right? Mm -hmm. Well, remember what the judiciary is. The judiciary reviews laws to make sure that the laws are constitutional. That's what the Court of Appeals does. And just because the legislature passes a law doesn't necessarily mean it's constitutional. That's why we have the three branches of government to check on each other. So, of course, the minute the legislature passes the law through both branches, now it's up for the, up for the court to decide whether the law is constitutional. I would think they would say it's constitutional. You know, I, it would be hard pressed to see the Court of Appeals strike down this type of law, considering the debate that's gone on, and and it seems that so many people in New York are so pro gay marriage at this point. Uh, but you never know. Now let me ask this, because there was a lot of there was a lot of backfighting between religious institutions when it came to the issue of this bill. Uh, yet and still, there were some provisions in there. Can you share a little bit about that in terms okay. of uh, limitations? Well, the institution of marriage comes from the Bible, all right, and it's in, in the book of Genesis, which basically says it's a man and a woman. Right? That's the issue. Um, the 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 religious institutions um, really get very very angry and we're not necessarily so pro-gay marriage, right? Mm -hmm. And that's always been the case whenever you're, you're dealing with religious institutions. Well, the question was, how much protection is the... Um, we have a, do we have a caller? Yeah, we do have a caller. And I'm gonna look, okay. look, but let's, let's, I'll, let me cut in and take All the right. caller, and I'll come back and let let's you finish the, the question. Caller. We do have a caller. We encourage you, as you said, call us, 960-7241. Once again, the number, 960-7241. And uh, your call here on open. Thank you. Hi, my name is Linda. Hi, Linda. I have a, a question for, um, for Mr. Lesh. Mm -hmm. What about a person that marries somebody outside, outside the country? Let's say that he has a temporary visa. Hello? 
outside of the country. Okay. I think that's what we heard was outside. Right, of we're dealing the with, we're dealing, I think the question basically is what happens if you marry somebody outside the country? H how you know does New York give that particular marriage full faith and credit? It, it, it's the same with any marriage that's outside the country. You know, so, um, more often than not, we will acknowledge marriages that occur in, occur in France. Um, uh, in the Philippines, wherever, wherever you're married, you come in here, you show you married, you show your marriage certificate. We will acknowledge that marriage. Whether you can get divorced here is is another situation, but we will acknowledge the marriage. I guess what the caller uh, is insinuating is what happens if they're married outside the country, same spouse marriage, and then they come into maybe mm -hmm. a state that doesn't necessarily recognize same-sex marriage. Mm -hmm. That you know that would be an interesting question. I'm not quite sure what would go, what would happen there, um, or the, the the or what the caller may also be um, because she got cut off may also be um, wondering, which is an interesting question: is what happens if you get married in married in New York, same-sex marriage, and then you go overseas? Well, they. Will they, will another country acknowledge. acknowledge the fact that you're married to a man or a woman to a woman in another country? All new issues. We don't really know, you know, what, what the stories are. We expect other countries to abide by our laws and give, again, it's called full faith and credit to whatever our laws are here. Um, but that doesn't always happen. For instance, um, uh, you know, we, we've been trying to extradite certain people from France to United States uh, for... Um, uh, for criminal charges many times. S we have treaties with certain countries that allow us to take their individuals to come here so we can prosecute them. Right? The, that famous producer, remember, in, in, um, uh, in France who uh, we've been trying to get here for, for 25, 30 years, um, but France does not have an extradition treaty. So they don't give our law full faith and credit. Mm -hmm. they, don't, they don't acknowledge it, even though we say, look, he violated child pornography laws, let's get him back here. But, you know, they, uh, but they, they don't necessarily do it. So certain countries will look at our laws and give it full faith and credit. Some countries won't. But when you're talking about a brand new law, less than a month old, same-sex marriage law, you don't know what other countries are going to do. And you don't know, you know what we're going to do with respect to whether they get married in Europe and they come to a, a state here that doesn't accept gay marriage. So these are all areas of the law that are still you know, in the process of, you know, of being looked up. And of course, you know who it lands in. It always lands into the courts. It's always right. the way it works. And, and, and once again, this is going to be some of the taxpayer dollars are going to have to wrangle out again in this, in this matter. With the appeal process and the fact that governor did sign it, sign it into law, where do things stand now? Because we know the end of July, there was something else that was coming up. The end well. of July is when you're going to be able to actually get married in New York. You know, go in, marriage, have your ceremony, and, 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 and get it started. Now, you had brought up an interesting question before, by the way. The, the question was the, the, the religious institutions. What is their, um, uh, what is their own um, l legal ramifications if they do marry somebody? Can, they be, can an action be brought against them by the church themselves or um, other uh, uh, institutions in New York who are trying to sue basically saying that it's illegal and you're doing something that's not correct. They're insulated. In other words, they can mm. perform a gay marriage and there will, no be, there will be no lawsuits against the church. And that was something that they were looking for because, you know, there are other, um, there will always be different groups that will bring, bring actions on behalf of religious organizations. And you don't want to be sued, you know, as a church, as a synagogue, as... Um, a mosque or whatever um, for performing the ceremony so it's nice to make sure that that they're protected but um, it's a fascinating area of the law and I think what Harold Price Ferringer did the attorney on the show on today's verdict did is he he brought out some very interesting points um, on you know in terms of the constitutionality of these types of laws and where we're heading as a nation mm -hmm. and I think we're becoming a little bit more liberal in certain areas yet the United States Supreme Court is conservative in other areas. Um, and I think the interesting part as an attorney for me, which makes this so much fun, is that each particular case that gets before the Supreme Court, um, you really don't know what they're going to do. Mm. And, and you really don't. And at least in New York now, although in New York we know it's legal, in the federal system, same-sex marriage has not been given a stamp of approval. 
basically the federal government has said New the states can do what they want in their individual states. But we're not going to tell you that same-sex marriage is something that we're going to say is just legal and that there could be a federal law legalizing it. Do you understand? Right. Gotcha. And, so, and this is what's been attempted. They attempted it in Congress and it was, and it was struck down. So where do we see things going from here? Well, I think... <laughs> You can, That's a loaded you know, question. It's, load, it, it's going to take a long time to see what the other states are going to do. There are six states now. Um, a lot of the other states want the revenue. Like I said, it brings in a lot of revenue when, when you come in and you get married, marriage licenses, weddings, photography, everything that comes with a marriage. Um, they don't want to be the last one to do it. Um, you, had, you, know, you have Connecticut, Iowa, Vermont, New Hampshire. District of Columbia, and now finally New York. It's only six. <laughs> and, New, and New York being and New York being the largest. The largest. And and, and, and needless to, and, and a point of uh, to say too, the governor, who's Catholic himself, has faced a lot of backlash for even signing them. Well, it's always that way. I mean, the, the Catholic Church is very powerful, and you know, New York um, always has to make sure that it, it it watches out for for certain groups who have opinions, and that's what we're made about, made for. But uh, in the end, I think. My opinion, and I'm allowed to say this, I think the legislator did the right thing. I think it, uh, it stepped up. Uh, it had been a long time coming. Uh, I, th I think that um, the gay movement um, deserved this. They've been living with their partners for a very long time. And why shouldn't they share the same rights uh, as married couples have? And you know what? They fought hard for this bill. And, uh, and you know, kudos to them for being able to get it passed finally. All right. David Lesh. We're going to take